Hi, I'm Roger Mashad. At Franklin Templeton Investments, we believe that citizens need to be informed about the resources that can help make higher education more affordable. That's why we're proud to support programming produced by the Caucus Educational Corporation and their partners in public television. Funding for this edition of One on One with Steve Adubato has been provided by Barnabas Health. Life is better healthy. The New Jersey Education Association. New Jersey's credit unions. Banking you can trust. NJ Best. New Jersey's 529 College Savings Plan. Turn a dream into a degree. Fedway Associates, Community Education Centers, and by the Northeast Regional Council of Carpenters. Promotional support provided by The Record, North Jersey's trusted source, and NorthJersey.com. And by NJ Biz, all business, all New Jersey. This is One on One. When you first heard that they were doing Charlie Rose and Gail King, didn't you go, what? People like laughing at others, so I don't mind if the other is me. See, you go right into the character. That's what it is. <laughs> I'm bringing families together a half an hour each week. Man, I'm doing something special. And so I do feel successful. Hi, Steve Adubato. We're coming to you from the New Jersey State Senate Chamber. We're talking to legislative leaders on a very important day. It is, in fact, uh, February 24th. The governor is going to be delivering his uh, budget address in just a little bit. We're here with one of the legislative leaders on the Democratic side. He's the deputy speaker. He's John Wisniewski. He is the chair of the Transportation and Independent, very independent, <laughs> Authorities <laughs> Committee. Good to see you, John. Good to see you, Steve. Um, now, we wake up to, well, we didn't wake up to it. It happened yesterday. Um, the uh, judge, Judge Mary Jacobson, talked about the pension situation. The state right. has to, has no choice, but to fund about $1.56 billion into the state fund, which wasn't in there last time. We'll talk about that in a second. Sure. But I also wake up to this. The Star-Ledger, our colleagues at the Ledger report this. New Jersey, sixth in nation in worst bridges because of your expertise on the transportation side. Translate that. What does that mean, Assemblyman? We have the six worst bridges in the nation? It means we haven't been funding our bridge program, we haven't been funding our transportation capital program the way we should, which means we're just not getting to the repairs, to the upkeep that we need to do on our infrastructure. And this stuff gets a lot of wear and tear. We are the most densely populated state in the nation. We've got a lot of traffic through our state. Uh, we need the money, we don't have the money, and that creates the problem. But Assemblyman, this has been going on a long time. The Transportation Trust Fund, which is talked about a lot, but little understood, it, it runs out of money on the last day of June. June 30th. The last day of June, this money funds the roads and the bridges. Okay, it was set aside. And mass transit. And mass transit, set aside in 1984, I believe. Right. To do this, and everyone knew it was running out of money. As we speak today, and by the time this program airs, hopefully there's a solution. What's your bet, will there be? I hope there's a solution. But should that solution, in your opinion, be a raising of the gas tax? We have to have new money. Look, Steve, the problem we're in today is exactly for that reason. We have relied on essentially a status quo input, but created ever increasing amounts of output and to the point where we've spent over $11 billion more than we've taken in into the Transportation Trust Fund. That translates into debt. But we saw that happening. Right. Right. Well, so no, why just keep doing because that? Because no one wanted to really tackle the tough issue of raising the revenue necessary to do. You can't build That's the a gas bridge. Tax. Yeah, well, it has Was to there be, another tax? Well, I, don't know I mean, about. We, use, we use some sales tax money for the Transportation Trust Fund. We use gas tax money. We use registration fees. It's a pot. Largest single source is motor fuels tax, petroleum gross receipts tax, gas tax, diesel tax. But that has largely stayed static. We've made some increases to it, but largely static. While we've spent ever-increasing sums of money, when I got into the legislature in 1996, the annual capital program was $640 million. It's now $1.6 billion. That represents almost all borrowed money. As I said, we've put some additional money in. There has been an institutional reluctance to address the fact that you can't build these things without new money. So we've borrowed the money, and now we have to pay it back. As some of the devil's advocate, the latest uh, Eagleton yeah. poll, uh, the latest um, poll that I've seen on this, uh, from Monmouth University says that most New Jerseyans sure, they're against this. do not support the idea of raising the gas tax. And so what would you say if someone said, wait, legislators sure. and the governor are simply responding to the, quote, will of the people by not wanting to 
increase the gas tax, and how could you criticize them for that? Well, leadership's not putting your finger in the air and seeing which way the wind's blowing. Leadership is understanding what the obligations of the state are, not only today, but tomorrow and for generations to come, and making sure we're providing for those obligations. Making sure our infrastructure is sound is important, not just because we have to go to and from work and we don't want to spend 600 or or $1,000 a year fixing our car, but so much of our economy is dependent on transportation. We have one of the world's largest waterborne facilities, the port, Elizabeth and Newark. We have one of the world's largest air cargo facilities. They require transportation infrastructure to get the goods out. If we don't invest in that transportation infrastructure, we lose jobs over the long run. We hurt our economic standing. This is about self-defense economically. Even if the public says, don't charge us more at the pump? We have to do a better job at explaining what's necessary. We have to do a better job at convincing the public on how this is an investment in their future. Say we don't do this. If we don't do this, what we will have is a deteriorating infrastructure. We will have fewer trains on time. We will have less rail capacity. <coughs> we will have roads that decay quicker than we can repair them. We will potentially have uh, catastrophic failures in bridges. I mean, these are things that we have to be life prepared and death? for. Uh, you know, look, I, is this a matter of life and death? Ultimately, it's happened in other bridges across this country that have been in disrepair. I don't want that to. That people have died because those roads, those bridges were not repaired and things happened. I'm not predicting. I hope we pray it doesn't happen. But it's not as if it hasn't happened. It's a possibility. Sentiment. It's a possibility. None of us can predict when a critical piece of infrastructure and a bridge that holds everything up is going to fail because of rust or rot or neglect. And we have to prepare to make sure that doesn't happen. But we can't do it by wishing it away. We can't do it by hoping it away. We have to have money from some source. And so our debate really should be what's the fairest way to raise this money? Who are the fairest payers of this money? Somebody's going to have to pay to mm. fix the roads and bridges. It's not going to happen by accident. As I said, we're taping on the 24th of February. Um, we're not going to date ourselves. We're going to be, be talking about issues that um, are not going to be solved anytime soon. And so one of the issues the Assemblyman is not going to be surprised they bring up involves independent authorities. Mm -hmm. The biggest is? The Port Authority of New York and New Jersey. Now, how is that different than the Delaware River Port Authority? Explain that to folks, because one is on the New Jersey-Pennsylvania oh. side, and the other one is New Jersey-Pennsylvania, right? Right. And the other yeah. one is New York-New Jersey. Right. Why is the other one from the 1921 compact between New York and New Jersey, Port Authority of New York and New Jersey, why is it so much bigger and more important? Well, it is physically bigger. It controls a lot more. The Port Authority of New York and New Jersey, Kennedy Airport, LaGuardia Airport, uh, Newark Airport, Atl Atlantic City, Stewart, Path. Holland Tunnel, Lincoln Tunnel, George Washington Bridge, go ahead. Ports. Matters. It's big. Lot. It's huge. Right? The budget of the Port Authority is larger than 26 states. Uh, the Delaware Port Authority that you're talking about, New Jersey and Pennsylvania, same type of agency, mm. much smaller in scope, much smaller in reach. Uh, certainly some of the same issues, but the Port Authority of New York and New Jersey is so big and the issues are so pervasive that it's the one that's caught everybody's attention. Biggest assemblyman being the biggest problem from your point of view well, it's in the, terms of the Port Authority of New York and New Jersey, which you believe must be changed is? The biggest problem is that it has a spending problem that is beyond its capacity to maintain. Their own internal report said that the Port Authority does not have enough revenue coming in to meet all of the promises the Port Authority has made. A part of the problem is it's become a real estate empire. Remember, the Port Authority was started as an agency to facilitate transportation between two jurisdictions, New York and New Jersey. Trans-Hudson. It's, it's now become a real estate empire, the, the World Trade Center. It is a landlord in both New York and New Jersey with lots and lots of property. Uh, that's not what that was designed for. The, the private sector is very able to handle real estate. We don't need a government agency to be involved in that. That sucks resources out of the Port Authority, a lot of resources. You worried about patronage? Well, patronage is a big problem in every government but, but, agency. But, but patronage at the Port Authority has been going on well before Governor Christie appointed certain people at the Port Authority. And I'm not saying that's patronage, but the fact is Governor Christie has appointed people there. Governor Cuomo has appointed there people there. Governor Corzine before him. Sure. Governor Whitman. Everybody. Governor uh, um, Go Grevy. back to the Go 20s. Okay, so, so here's the thing. Right. Should governors of each state be able to put their person, their people at the Port Authority? Because you have New York, New Jersey. Isn't that another way of saying that's how New Jersey's interests are going to be protected? Well, 
I mean, there's a big gap between saying, should they be able to appoint their people in critical management positions? Sure. Absolutely. That's what I'm talking about. Absolutely. But the question is, is how much is enough? How much is necessary? Does it get to a point now where you're creating management positions just to have management positions? Do you think that's what's happening? Well, if you look at the size of the management of the Port Authority, it certainly defies expectations as to why you need that scope of management for an agency with the focus that it's supposed to have. I think they can do better if you look at the salaries, if you look at the way the compensations are arranged there. They certainly can do better, but the real problem with the Port Authority is its mission creep. We have an agency that originally had a jurisdiction so many miles from the Statue of Liberty, now has an airport in Atlantic City, which is far beyond its original mission, Stewart Airport, uh, which is not performing as anticipated. Uh, again, beyond its original mission. The real estate, again, beyond its original mission. Uh, it's a transportation agency and ought to act like Assembly, one. Real quickly, make this matter to the people watching us right now in the multi-state area, particularly in New Jersey. Sure. You say, all right, so that's inside baseball. That no, doesn't involve me. Well, no. uh, make it make the case. Okay, if you work in New York and you live in New Jersey, you earn about $100,000 a year, you pay more in tolls to the Port Authority than you pay in income tax to the state of New Jersey. Let me say that again. If you earn about $100,000 a year, you work in Manhattan, mm. you live in New Jersey, you drive across the bridge, you take the tunnel every day, you pay more in tolls to the Port Authority every year than you pay in income tax to the state of New Jersey. So That's those out dollars of control. and how they're spent matter a great deal. Absolutely. One minute real quick. We're going to fix this pension thing? We have to fix it. And here's how we're going to fix it. By recognizing that there's an obligation that was created, perhaps not by Chris Christie, perhaps not by this sitting legislature. It's been created. It's an obligation of the state of New Jersey. We have to be very careful about walking away from the obligations the state creates. If we walk away from this obligation today, we will create the expectation that the state of New Jersey may walk away from its other obligations in the future. And what obligations would they be? Are we going to walk away from our obligation to educate our children? Are we going to walk away from our obligation to make sure that people have adequate health care? Are we going to walk away from our obligation to make sure that our roads and bridges and mass transit are safe? We can't walk away and cherry pick which obligations we're going to live up to. We have to deal with this. Yeah. We may say we wish we didn't make those obligations, and that's a valid lament, but it's an obligation that we have to live up to. Assemblyman John Wozneski, uh, the chair of the Independent Authorities uh, Commission Committee, along with transportation, uh, critically important. And the deputy speaker, I want to thank you for joining us on this uh, series, looking and talking to the legislative leaders. We're here in the uh, Senate chamber, and uh, we appreciate it, Assemblyman. Thanks, Steve. Thanks. Stay with us. We'll be right back right after this. To see more one-on-one -on -one with Steve Adubato programs, visit us online at steveadubato.org. If you would like to express an opinion, email us at info at caucusnj.org. Find us on Facebook at facebook.com slash PhD and follow us on Twitter at Steve Adubato. Hi, Steve Adubato. We're coming to you from the New Jersey Senate chamber here at the State House. This is part of a series we're doing with uh, legislative leaders talking to the people who matter, particularly when the governor is out doing some national things, but also trying to take care of business. Here in the uh, state, we're joined by State Senator Joseph Carillas, who represents the 13th legislature. You're right, Stephen. We're here on the 24th of uh, February. The governor is giving his budget address this afternoon. Mm -hmm. Yesterday, a major announcement by Judge Mary Jacobson about the pension payment yeah. that has to yeah. be paid by the state. Anxious? You know what, this, this, this is an anxious time for the state government and for state capitals, I think, all around America. Uh, it's, a, it's a challenging time uh, economically for, for, for a lot of people. I've often felt that the state government doesn't match the greatness of the people of New Jersey. We have some good people here, but we've all got to collectively rise to the occasion. Uh, the Democratic leadership here in the legislature, uh, the Republican governor and his team. Uh, and I think if we can get together and solve some of these big practical problems, not necessarily ide ideological problems for the state, uh, <coughs> it's going to help everybody that wants to be helped politically uh, out as well. I always say this, you know, we're taping on the 24th. I hope the Transportation Trust Fund issue is resolved. The Transportation Trust Fund is the pot of money that pays for, pays for the roads and bridges. Uh, one third of them, as we do this program, is reported today crumbling. Um, antiquated, in trouble. It's running out of money on the last day of June. I hope by the time this program airs, yeah. 
that there's a solution, but as we speak right now, there isn't one. Why does it take a crisis? Why does it take a pension crisis? Why does it always seem to take a crisis before there's even a so-called solution? Is that me, my interpretation of it? Listen, it's human nature, right? We were all students at one point. We all know about waiting to the last day for the term paper, the last moments to study for the exam. Typically in the private sector, there's enough pressure to avert the crises. There's so much scrutiny um, from, from uh, stockholders and stakeholders, um, and, it shouldn't, and it shouldn't happen here. Um, but we've got a pension crisis uh, looming. Uh, we heard some of, about it uh, uh, just yesterday, a big court decision, the state government, the, the, the other branches, the political branches will, will grapple. Uh, with that outcome. You mentioned the Transportation Trust Fund. Uh, and, and we have an ongoing jobs crisis, uh, jobs in, crisis in this state. I don't know if crisis is the right word. Well, Probably not the right word. But we need to grow more and faster and better and create the kinds of jobs that will satisfy all our people. And, you know, 20, 30 years ago, New Jersey could act as if it were an island. We were in a great geographic location between New York and Philadelphia and the Atlantic Ocean. But now it's a big flat world. And people are competing uh, all around the region, the country, uh, the world at large. Uh, and so people don't have to be in New Jersey. So we have to make it as, as attractive as possible for them to want to be here, for all the other reasons that it's attractive to be here. We love living in New Jersey. And so it, we, we, it's a competition. And, and right now, we're not winning it, but we can win it. But Senator, is that why you've introduced this six-phase jobs bill, fostering innovation, lowering excessive costs, reducing uh, restrictive regulations, developing New Jersey's workforce, enhancing tourism and agriculture, it goes on and on. And by the way, is that the role of a state legislator? Well, it, it, it is. In a perfect world, it wouldn't be. We would leave uh, the private sector to its devices to grow and to flourish, and we would deal with roads and bridges and schools um, uh, and the safety net uh, and, and the like. But uh, we need to have a public private partnership. We need to compete with other localities around the region, the well, country, what would this do? and this the world. Pass. Well, those are an array of good jobs and economic development bills to help foster a climate where, where companies can locate, relocate, flourish here. Uh, and they're smaller in comparison to some of the big omnibus uh, economic incentive bills that we've passed to, to attract big companies away from Manhattan, uh, for example, to the Hudson waterfront and, and, to, and to other places. Manhattan's a very high cost place. If we're a little bit less uh, and we're, 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 we're very close, there's going to be people that want to come here. Some people won't only want to be in New York because it's New York. Why do we but we're so doing, many? But we're doing, we're doing, uh, Senator, why we're do we doing a good job. We have to do more. Why do, sorry for interrupting, why do we lose so many businesses? Why do we lose so Many businesses. The governor talks about, I believe it's Mercedes Benz. He makes reference it's to a that. big high profile. We lost one, Mercedes but, Benz, but, there are a lot of jobs. But, but we there lose are others. a lot. Yeah. Why is that? Yeah. Well, you would think that the folks in Germany would think that the cost savings to go to Atlanta wouldn't be enough. New Jersey to, to Atlanta, to, Mercedes Benz did to, that. To, to dislocate uh, all those people and that big operation. But the, but the truth is, these operations can be uh, performed in many, many places. Uh, it does not have to be uh, in New Jersey. So, what's our competitive and, advantage? And so, in other places, Rent is cheaper, land is cheaper, insurance is cheaper, taxes are cheaper, the climate may be better. And so, you know, New Jersey is a, is a, is a great location next to the greatest city in the world uh, with great natural resources and great, bright, educated people. So all of us are here for a reason, right? We love raising our families here and being close to so many great things and, and great schools. So we got to take that great human capital and uh, and marry it to a better business climate so we can grow and flourish. The reason I focus, Steve, so much on jobs and economic development is because everything else flows from a strong economy and strong tax revenues to, to the state treasury. Do you think the tax structure screwed up? You think the regulatory structure is screwed up? Well, I think, I, I, I think that the, the, the business taxes here are too burdensome. I think the income tax, when the top rate for personal income taxes is near 9%, and in Pennsylvania, for example, just a stone throw across the river from where we're sitting, uh, the effective the top rate is 5%. 5 percent. Five versus nine. Five versus nine. So if you're the CEO of Johnson & Johnson, you parachute into New Brunswick to run your company, but you go back home to New Jersey. I don't want to pick on, uh, go on back Johnson & Johnson to Pennsylvania. You pay 5% versus nine. Yeah. So listen. 
people, people can, can get that math. So say someone says, wait a minute, we would get that revenue. Hold on, devil's advocate. Sure. A lot of Democrats would say, wait a minute. We would get that revenue, plus we should increase the millionaire's tax because we can get the millionaires. You know what? It makes everybody feel good, those of us that are, are not paying that high rent, high rate, uh, but the math doesn't work. If it worked, maybe we could, we, could, we, could, we could justify doing it, but what happens is we lose that revenue. We have an a out-migration of high net worth people. Where I represent Steve in, in some of the affluent parts of Monmouth County, I could take you on a residential tour and point out the houses of, of, of affluent people who live there six months a year less a day so they don't pay New Jersey income tax. Their primary residence is New Hampshire, it's Florida, it's Texas, uh, it's someplace else. Because the tax else. structure in that Because the tax structure is, is less. So that's, you ask about the tax structure, that, some of the, the, uh, what about the, uh, the, the burdensome business taxes and the regulatory stuff. Listen, you know, the DEP, uh, the, the Department of Community Affairs, sometimes uh, other agencies of government, uh, they're, 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 they're too tough. We have consumer protections that we've got to uphold, environmental constraints, no doubt that's about what it. Other, that's what, that's what it's, Citizen Action, it's New Jersey very, Citizen Action will argue that. A lot of the consumer groups will say, you'll call them uh, burdensome regulations. Others, these folks would say, wait a minute, Senator, yeah. they protect yeah. us, those yeah. regulations, they, you and said. And we need them to protect us. But the mindset of the staffing in those departments ought to be this. How can we say yes to this great new job creator and also protect the environment? Balance. How do we find a way to make it happen, to build that road, to create that company, to allow that expansion, rather than saying, no, uh, it's not gonna work out for this regulation. It's all about a mindset. And at the end of the day, we protect the environment where we can have the right dollars to put behind rigorous environmental <coughs> programs. But when we're strapped for cash, when we have a, 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 a $6 billion structural deficit, and we can't pay for our roads, and we can't pay for our pensions, and we can't pay for our obligations, it's those consumer protections that o over time uh, won't be able to be financed and strengthened. So it's to everybody's advantage. So in the time I have left, I'm curious about this. You talk about a six. Um, some people argue it's a little bit more than a seven billion dollar structural mm. deficit. Define structural deficit because that puts you behind the eight ball as soon as you and the governor and others who are responsible for coming up with this budget. Before you get started, that's like you, you, you go into your annual budget at home and you're in a massive hole yep. before you even start talking about discretionary spending. Talk about well, what the structural deficit it's is. It's not a deficit in the way we would have a deficit at home necessarily where, where we got all these bills that we, we have to pay. It's an anticipated deficit because every year we do a new budget bill. Today we're going to hear from uh, the governor on his uh, in initial proposal. Um, but we have so many um, expected and recurring <coughs> obligations that are very hard and, and sometimes Pension legally. Pension health care payments for public employees. Sometimes legally need to be adhered to. All the things that you mentioned. So by the time we deal charity with. Care charity care costs. Charity care for, for hospitals. For people who can't afford the and, hospital. And school assistance, which the courts. School aid. Mandate that we pay an inordinate amount of money to certain schools and, and we can't. Is it inordinate, we, Senator? And it, I, think, I, think it, I think it can be given some of the results. You add uh, tax relief and you add other items and so the discretionary part of the budget all, all of a sudden becomes a very small minuscule part. left for part. you and your colleagues to decide exactly on. Exactly right, the discretionary part. So when revenues don't, recurring revenues don't match up, it's a problem and you've got to do some accounting and you've got to do some, uh, some magic tricks to, to, to make it all work. Um, and then the next year you got to start all over again uh, with some smart and sometimes not so smart uh, 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 budget machinery. So the way to deal with it, of course, because if we raise the income tax... Uh, no way you're it, for that? It would, it, no, because for millionaires? Because it's counterproductive. For millionaires? No, Senator. no, no, because it's counterproductive, Steve. The math doesn't work out. And even if it work out, even if we what raise it... What do you say it, the math doesn't work out? I mean, most people are going to leave, we're not we going to get their money? Because we, we, we lose their income. So instead of paying a very high income tax bill, we get zero. But even if they all stayed, it's not enough to, to, to make up the, the, the deficit that we're talking about. It's not enough money. So we got to do some smart things. I'm, I'm, I'm gratified and uh, I'm very interested to see how the, how the public unions will, will work with us to try to the reform pension the pension problem. Um, I was happy to hear of some recent reports uh, on, on that front. Uh, and we got having to do with the governor and potentially the New Jersey Education Association. That's correct. And hopefully other unions, because 
it's their retirement. And, and, and they have the skin in the game. And I'm a, I'm a state legislator, a longtime legislator. I've got a small pension. All of us have, have, have a big stake in this. We've got to fix it. But the main thing is we now. have to grow the economy. We have to be a thriving economic machine, and that will lift a lot. That will provide us with the revenue we need. Senator Joseph Carrillo, so while he represents the 13th legislative district in Monmouth. All Monmouth County. Um, he also is a key leader in the state legislature. And I want to thank you for joining us. You and your colleagues have thank been you, very Steve. kind. One on One with Steve Adubato has been a production of the Caucus Educational Corporation, celebrating over 25 years of broadcast excellence and 13 for WNET. Funding for this edition of One on One with Steve Adubato has been provided by Barnabas Health, the New Jersey Education Association, New Jersey's Credit Unions, NJ Best. Fedway Associates, Community Education Centers, the Northeast Regional Council of Carpenters, and by these public-spirited organizations committed to informing New Jersey citizens about the important issues facing the Garden State, and by Employers Association of New Jersey. First steps, first day of school, first game. When their first day of college arrives, will you be able to pay for it? NJ Best can help. It is the 529 college savings plan for New Jersey families, and you can start saving today with as little as $25. To learn about NJ Best 529 college savings plan, its investment objectives, risks, and costs, read the investor handbook available at 877-755-GRAD or njbest.com.